because the face of Sydney would have already been ruined. Wollamaloo and the rocks would be like water wall skyscrapers, yep. huge glass buildings, if the Green Band movement hadn't been put in place. And so we're pretty fortunate that in the Greens, the leader of the Green Band movement is now a member and he ran in the federal election and he was also once on Sydney City Council. He was one of the people who saved the Queen Victoria building. Oh, look, Jack Mundy saved the Queen Victoria building, was instrumental in saving the rocks and Woolloomooloo, and also what's not known so well, as well as uh, saving much urban bushland, so actually was instrumental in work at Macquarie University, which stopped the axing a, for one of the first courses on gay and lesbian rights. So it's pretty diverse what they did. We've got some great candidates that didn't say this to Chris, but I think if anyone in the council is I think, I, I think I can say this without bias. Um, I think I can. <laughs> it is Chris. Chris is such a hard worker and he really does follow through and is down to earth. He's with the people, which sometimes I think that the other um, people in the council, um, particularly on housing issues of everyday life, I really don't think they've got a clue what they're doing. Uh, yeah, how fantastic it would be to have the first Greens Lord Mayor of Sydney. Chris Harris would do an excellent job. He's got the experience under his belt based from his own life experience, the small business person working on legal issues, and now he's had four, more than four years already on council. He knows the issues inside out, and he's been there working with communities on everything from solar plans to stop over development, significant transport solutions for the city. He would be such an excellent choice. He would bring a level of expertise that the council needs. Now, wherever course, this is going around the world, hello to all the Greens around the world. For New South Wales, everyone in New South Wales is voting. Now, we have a problem in New South Wales. Two words, and I said this to Chris as well. Frank Sartor, who seems to be abolishing local government, which to me just rings alarm bells in terms of democracy of everyday life for, for people in New South Wales. Uh, Frank Sartor has, has far too much power and he has that power because Labor, with the support of the Coalition, have passed so many changes to the planning laws that the community have been lock effectively locked out from having a real say. Local councils have had most of their power stripped away because the, as planning minister he is able to take over making the decision using what's called a Part 3A section of the Planning Act. Now it's extremely wrong, it means that he can ignore heritage laws, environmental laws, doesn't have to take notice of his own Director General, doesn't even have to have an environmental impact statement for that project. It's deeply wrong what's happened. Those laws were passed by Labor and the Coalition voting together, the Greens have been fighting it all the way and we have to overturn those planning laws, give more power back to councils, involve the community in how our areas should be planned. That's how the laws should be set up. They were once, we need to get back to that. Now this is going to be a bit of a hard question. To, uh, as an affirmation for people, what sort of things can the Greens do, the councillors, could they do to make a difference, to change what the damage that, that Sartre is doing for, for, for New South Wales? Look, it's hard for Greens councillors to rectify the damage that Frank Sartor has done. We need a statewide movement, we need a really strong public voice. 
of anger and concern about the depths of the um, damage that's been done by these new laws. But electing more Greens on the council will make a significant step in helping to mobilise that action because at the moment the planning laws are bad, they're dangerous, they need to be overturned and we need to work hard to achieve that. Getting more Greens on council is an important step along that track. We're standing in a record number of Greens um, in many local councils along the coast and also west of the Great Dividing Range. Northern Beaches, up to the Hornsby, Epping, Karingai, Warringah. They're all areas where having Greens on council would make a big difference in terms of services, local environmental issues and addressing the challenges of climate change and peak oil. There's a great deal that local councils can do at this level and that's where that's one of the reasons we need more Greens on council. And Chris just mentioned the solar thermal power station. How, how could the councils band together if, I mean, I think there will be more green councils. How could this be done? Uh, look, it can be done in a lot of ways. It's certainly true that the um, what councils can achieve in this country is limited. But by Greens councillors putting forward motions and calling for solar thermal power stations, more solar on roofs, bringing forward initiatives in their own council responsibilities, that whole rollout of solar projects will put state and federal governments under pressure also the projects. So again, it's a momentum that we need to turn around the decades of dangerous policies that we've had from the major parties. This is, sounds really, really important in New South Wales. Oh, this is a really busy night. Uh, I've got raffle tickets to, to sell them and uh, the Greens have got a campaign to write. Thank you very much Thank for, you. for chatting, Lee. Yes. And, um, good to see you again. One month to the election, remember to vote green. Good, uh, some good, good advice. Thank you all YouTubers. God bless you all. Thanks.